Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we are back working on our horizontal boring mill. And I think this is going to be the last little thing I need to do before we are able to do our first job on this machine. And uh, yes, I am going to be doing something rather unconventional uh, on my first job on this machine, but it's going to hopefully get the job done. Um, in the previous, in a previous episode, we made a Morse taper adapter to put a live center into the tailstock on this machine. Uh, over here on the spindle, I've got a number five Morse taper dead center uh, that get, fits right up into the spindle. And uh, for you astute machinist guys out there, yes, I am planning on putting a shaft between centers here uh, to do some work. And But I need to be able to drive that shaft. Now, I could, if I wanted to, I guess, mount a chuck up on this, but uh, I really want to go between centers. And when you're going between centers, uh, you typically will use a drive dog, something like this, to, that will mount on your shaft. It has this little uh, piece that sticks out. This will come in contact with something and that will actually drive it, so it'll push it around. So what I need is a driver plate to fit up on here. Now, a lot of your old lathes actually had a driver plate uh, that could mount up where the chuck was, and it was basically just a disc uh, that very similar to a chuck, but it was just a cast iron or steel or whatever disc, and it had a slot in it that this little arm would reach up into, and as that turns, it would push this thing around, and that's what would drive the shaft uh, was this driver dog. That's what I want to do. I want to build a driver plate, and uh, to do this, I've got some steel components that we're just going to fabricate uh, and make a driver plate. So I've got a piece of uh, thick wall tubing here. Uh, this is going to be bored out so that it'll slide up over the spindle here. I think this is three inches. I'll get a good measurement on that when the time comes. And uh, we'll bore it out on the lathe so this will slide up on there. There is up in the top of the shaft a, a little dimple where you can put a set screw in uh, to drive it. I'm probably also going to split this and make it where I can put a bolt on there and clamp it and squeeze it kind of squeeze it on here to make it good and tight. That's kind of my game plan. And on the front of this, we're going to weld a uh, disc. Uh, this is just a round disc that was cut out on a, on a you know, CNC plasma table. Um, and I'm going to mill a slot in this that this uh, will fit up into and, uh, and drive that. So anyway. That's the game plan, and uh, I'm going to show you a quick sketch here of what we're going for, and we're going to get this thing uh, fabricated and hopefully be ready to try this thing out here coming up very soon with a job uh, using this machine. Let me show you what we're going to build. So here's my chicken scratch drawing uh, that we're going to make. Again, we got the plate, we got the uh, tube in here. We're going to uh, first mill the slot in the plate. Uh, Probably could have just had that CNC cut, although I found this disc that was already cut, so I, it wasn't something that I had special uh, made, but I'm just going to mill a slot up here. Uh, probably seven eighths, I think, is what we're going to make that. I've just been measuring some of my dogs to figure out how big that slot needs to be. Uh, the thick wall tubing, uh, this needs to be about five inches long. Uh, my tubing's a little bit longer than that. We'll saw it off uh, to make it where, as long as it needs to be, and uh, yeah. We'll weld that together, then we'll drill and bore it out to make a precision fit up on the, uh, on the machine over on the lathe. But uh, it's pretty much what we got. So there we go, that's, that's what we're building. So my first step is gonna be to mill the slot. And uh, that's just roughly where I want it. That's about how deep it needs to be. And again, I think seven eighths in diameter is uh, what we need to be. So I'm gonna go get set up over on the milling machine and uh, we'll see if we can get that milled out. So let's show you the setup we got here over on the mill machine. So first thing I did is I came in, I found the centers of this just using a center finder on a, uh, on a ruler here. So, uh, and I've just roughly made an X. This gave me the, the line that I want to actually mill down. I had just sketched it on there and it was not perfectly straight with the, uh, where it needs to be, but I had something here to line up on. So I got this mounted, it's sitting on three, one, two, three blocks. So I got a one inch gap. It's raised up off the table one inch. We got a 
open area here in the middle where it's not going to hit anything. The one, two, three blocks are plenty out of the way. It's just clamped down to the table in three places. And uh, that should hold things uh, sufficiently for us to mill this. We've got a seven eighths inch end mill over here in the uh, machine. And uh, yeah, I think we are ready to go. This is a uh, I think half inch thick plate. Uh, probably not gonna try to do it all in one pass. Probably just kind of nibble it out a little bit. Um, see how it goes. So let's, uh, let's fire it up over here. Put a little cutting oil on it. And we're just gonna take her for a ride here. Got a mark on the plate where I want to stop at. It's not a precision measurement by any stretch of the imagination, but it'll give us something to go off of here. All right. That's the first pass. We'll take another hundred thousandths on our depth. Bring these chips out of here. that that should do it got my thick ball tubing I cut this to five inches long and uh, when I got it the one side had already been faced this side is the side I cut, so uh, we're going to uh, go ahead and face that, get it square with the tubing, and I'm probably going to go ahead and put a pretty good chamfer in there for weld prep as well. So let's uh, fire up the lathe, and we'll go ahead and get that faced off. That looks good. Got a 45 degree cutter here and I'm just gonna put a nice big chamfer in there. Plenty. And that is ready to weld. Already found the center of this plate. I'm just going to take a uh, center punch here and give it a dimple there. And then I've got a set of dividers. And uh, that tubing is four inches in diameter. So I've got to set the two inches. And I'm just going to scribe a circle on here. And that will help me locate where I want to weld this in place. Um, that looks pretty good. So let me go get set up for welding and uh, we're going to weld that boss in place. But before I weld this, I just remembered I need to do one other thing. I want to cut a slit down one side of this. I'm going to weld a couple of ears on this thing and put a bolt through there where I can tighten that up and hopefully just tighten this up on that spindle uh, where I have a little bit more than just the set screw holding it in place. So let me go do that real quick. Uh, I just use my, my, hopefully I just use my saw, my marble saw and cut that in half. We'll have to figure out how to get it set up, but um, I'll be back here in a minute. So let's catch you up where we're at here. Uh, I went over to my marble saw and first thing we did is I took and I just split this whole piece of a uh, tubing all the way up. And when I did, whenever it got through, it kind of sprung open just a little bit wider than what the original gap was, which is fine. I need a little gap in there. And then uh, because this bottom is going to be welded in place, 
it wasn't going to leave a lot of flex in here for this to close up to be held tight down at the bottom. So I made another cut crossways from that that went uh, probably two thirds of the way through. And um, what that'll give is basically from here to here, it's going to be able to close up um, and tighten up on that shaft, which is what I'm after. Uh, from there, um, I went and found some pieces of steel. I made a couple of ears and I've got a little jig here. All of these are just some of these uh, shims that come in different thicknesses. The gap in here is about 50,000. So I put a 50,000 shim that's gonna drop down in there to keep that gap open. And I put two 25,000 shims on either side of it. So that's gonna leave me a hundred thousandths gap in between these two ears. And that is just basically gonna sit right there. I'll weld this on onto uh, the the piece of tubing, and then we'll weld the tubing onto the plate, and uh, I think we'll be good to go uh, as far as uh, getting this thing all ready to go. So let me get. I'm gonna take this and clean this up a little bit. We're gonna be doing some welding, uh, and we'll go over there and get this thing welded together. All right, we're just gonna MIG weld this in place. Um, I'm going to start by just tacking it. I want to get a, a couple of tacks on either side of this cut so that the heat doesn't expand that bottom out anymore. And as soon as I get it tacked on, I'm going to probably go ahead and put in my um, ear and get that tacked into place. And then we'll weld it all up. I've got the um, hub here centered up on that line that we scribed as well as I can. Uh, we're going to put it in the lathe and we'll turn everything true over on the lathe once we uh, get this welded up. So we should be good to go. Let's uh let's get her welded. All right, that should hold it for the time being. Let me go ahead and get my ears on here where they need to be. I'm going to kind of turn this up to do that. Yeah, that'll kind of support it. Again, I'm just going to tack this in place right now and then we'll weld everything in. Let's uh, do it. set up over in the lathe now and I've got this mounted up into my three jaw chuck and notice that we've got the um, the little boss here locked down with the shims uh, in place. That's going to prevent this from collapsing any as I'm uh, turning it and, and keep it spread apart particularly while I'm boring this hole out so that I got plenty of room for it to actually uh, close up. Again there's about a 50 thousandths gap in the hole in there about a hundred thousandths uh, between the two bosses here. And that should be more than enough to tighten up on that spindle. So uh, we look good there. Game plan here, um, I wanna go ahead and put a hole in here and then start boring this out. We'll probably go ahead and drill the plate out and get a boring bar on here and uh, bore it out to size. 
I suspect that we'll probably have a little bit of run out on the outside diameter uh, and I'll just probably true it up and just get it looking good. I'm hoping that the face is pretty parallel to the uh, rest of it and really for its purpose uh, it's not anything critical. All we're going to be using really is this slot in here to drive the dog. So even if there's a little bit of run out on the face, not a big deal. Uh, but if there's run out on the outside diameter, it's just going to look bad running on the machine. So I'll probably true that up just to be on the safe side. Let's fire up the machine and get started. See what it looks like. Yeah. Got a little run out again on the outside diameter. I'm looking at the face and it's minimal. So uh, I'm not going to worry about facing it. I'd rather kind of keep that uh, original finish on there if I can. And I'm going to have to adjust my cutter. The swing is so wide on this that that's as far back as I can go. But I should be able to, uh, I may have to put a different cutter in there. Let's see. We'll come up with something here. Start with a little bit of a light cut. It's just a interrupted cut. I don't want to be taking too much off of there. There is a little bit of run out in the face, but I'm not too worried about it. We're just going to let it roll. Uh, we'll get this pass done. I'm going to deburr or chamfer those edges. And I think we'll be good if my chamfer tool will fit in there. Let's see. Yeah, I think I can make it work. All right, let's uh, work on our bore. Get a center drill and we will find our center of this. Get a little dimple there started for a drill. Start with a small drill bit here. Let's get a hole started in it. the size here. As I go up to a larger drill bit, I'm slowing down my speed a little bit on the lathe. This is a one inch hole we're pushing in there right now. We got a two inch drill bit. Now we're going to start the process of boring. I've got a boring bar in here and I'm going to be pretty aggressive if it'll let me. It's 100 thousandths bore. I think we might be cutting into the bore this time. Let's see if it uh, catches in there. Yeah, it's just barely, barely cutting, but it is. So we're going to bore all the way deep this time. 
all right, I measured my spindle in there. I need to make this bore two inch nine nine zero is what we're going for right now. We're at about 2.636. So uh, I've got that in my digital readout. We're gonna continue on. Taking a little bit at a time, nibble it out. We're getting close to our final size. We're not, shouldn't be there quite yet, but we should be getting real close. A 75, 85. Yeah, I'm actually within about two thou. See, that's a little bit less there, about six thou, about 10 thou. Just kind of depends on where you measure it at. This is not a super critical fit. It's gonna be a slip fit up on that spindle. So I'm running anywhere between needing about five and 10 thousandths in here. Or actually about five thousandths. Let's, let me, 75, yeah, 85. Yeah, which is more or less what my digital readout's reading. I'm just gonna dial in my number and we're gonna go for it. This should be the last pass, I believe. I'm gonna go in two inch, nine, nine, zero, right there. <coughs> it's not taking out much at all, which is what I want on this final pass. We'll let that bore on through and I'll double check my measurement and everything checks out. We'll go try it out for a fit on the machine. So let's take it for a test fit here. This should just slide right up on that spindle. I like it. So Next, uh, there is a um, um, screw hole in here. I need to drill and tap a set screw hole that will key into that little socket, that little dimple up here in the shaft. I need to figure out exactly where that needs to go and uh, go do that. And I think we'll have this uh, project knocked out. And just like that, I think we are done. I have got the uh, grub screw in here that is keyed into that little hole back there. So that's what's actually keying this in the essence to the shaft. We've also shrunk this up up here. We tightened that bolt up and that's squeezing it onto the shaft. So uh, this is, should be firmly attached and it should engage the dog and drive the dog just fine. So I think we are done. Well guys, I think we got this knocked out. Uh, with any luck, the next time you see this machine on one of my videos, we're gonna be doing a job on it unless we find another problem we have to work on, which I don't think we will. So uh, I'm very happy with how that turned out. Uh, just a quick fabrication, uh, nothing too terribly fancy, but it will get the job done. It will drive that dog, which is what we're after. And uh, I'm. this will be something that we'll throw in our pile of tools over here for this machine and uh, I'm sure it'll get used again somewhere down the road. Uh, it'll be a handy nice little feature to have for it no doubt. Guys with that we're going to sign off as always. Thanks guys for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up and comments are always greatly appreciated and they do help feed the algorithm over on YouTube to help people discover my channel. A uh, big huge thank you to all the supporters out there who support the site through Patreon, PayPal, etc. We really could not do everything we do here without of all of your help and assistance on that front. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that uh, bell icon to get uh, notifications when new videos are posted. And with that, we are going to sign off and we will catch you guys on the next video again. Thanks for watching.